Hi everyone, thank you for joining me during today's presentation. My name is uh, Jordi Feenstra and I'm an experimental autonomous filmmaker and machinimator. I'm also known under my name A Pixelated Point of View, which stands for my personal preference towards digitized art and technology within my projects. So in this presentation I would like to highlight the use of depth of field maps in some of my recent Quake 3 machinima films. I will briefly introduce the concept of what a depth map or depth of field map actually is, what it's used for, and how I've utilized this particular concept in different ways while working on some of my projects. I will be using three of my most recent films as examples. On the left you can see depth map which was released in the fall of 2019. In the middle is its direct sequel, Death Map Next, uh, which was released a little over a year later. And to the far right is Ignition, and that one uh, was released in early 2021. So all of the films share the same experimental nature and aim to shed new perspectives on the game itself or on various game modes found within Quake 3. So first and foremost, uh, what is a depth map? Well, a depth of field map is a file that contains information regarding the depth of field of your composition which can then be utilized by certain apps or effects found within image processing software or video NLEs. As you can see on the screen, the footage looks the same as original footage as all of the contents of the original footage are visible, but the entire picture is changed to black and white. Basically, the depth of field map is telling us, based upon the parameters set in the software, everything that is defined as close by is black, everything that is defined as far away is white. But it could also tell us everything black in the picture will be sharp, everything white will be blurred. And by playing around and shifting with this information within this picture, we can actually change the depth of field in your shot. And so in a nutshell, this is what it looks like. On the left you have the original footage, on the right you have a depth of field map. And with both of these combined, you get a similar result as shown on the third picture. In terms of quick free machinima, this way of creating depth of field was often used in the early 2000s on lower-end computers, as it required little additional resources for the game to export an additional depth of field stream. Machinimators could then either use their NLE of choice by importing both sequences, or use automated scripts in Adobe Photoshop to merge the two together. Now during present day, this method is called the inferior or the obsolete method, as computers you know, have dramatically increased in power. Uh, currently, we're able to render footage in Quake 3 up to 4K resolutions and beyond, with the depth of field actually rendered inside of the shot. So, yeah, more or less, no separate depth of field maps are required anymore. But if these streams are considered obsolete and inferior, why would you want to use them at all? Well, it can most importantly serve numerous artistic purposes, and we could also argue that in the age of powerful and expensive gaming computers, it could also significantly lower the threshold for a lower end and older computers to participate in the creation of Quake 3 Machinima. So let's take a quick look how it was done. So here I am in a Quake 3 level. I'm using Quake 3 Arena with the Challenge Pro Mode Arena mod, and I do my capturing and manipulation in Q3 MME, or Quake 3 Movie Makers Edition. So here I am in the level. Um, I open up the console to record a demo. Since I only need to have an empty part of the map, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to stop the capture, exit the game, and open Q3 MME. So let's open it, and let's find a spot in the map to make some interesting footage with. Alright, this looks like a good place. Uh, now we'll add a basic camera animation. and I will set my capture parameters. And especially the most important one is the MME underscore safe depth parameter in order to save the depth of field map. And let's create a JPEG sequence. I add it to my capture list and it's ready to render. Now that it's done rendering, I have uh, two streams of images, a JPEG and a PNG sequence. The JPEG sequence contains my original footage, which basically I can now throw away. And the PNG sequence contains the depth of field map. By adding this in my NLE, I can now edit it and make a movie. So to me, it was only natural that for its sequel, I wanted to raise the bar in terms of creativity and utilization of depth maps. Uh, this film contains both the original and the depth map stream. The idea here is that the original footage was heavily edited in post to make it look like its depth map counterpart. 
Instead of purely black and white, this picture has more of a grey tint to it, which in my opinion suited the heavy grain better in comparison with the original, and it also preserved more details and, and perhaps emphasized the eeriness of the shot, rather than how more experimental it was compared to the first one. Alright, let's make another example. So here I am in one of my favorite maps, Q3 DM6. Let's capture a signature piece of footage I've used in a number of my Quake 3 machinima. So let's start the recording. I jump. I stop the recording. So back in MME, I will create a keyframe path to keep the camera on the character while he's jumping on the level. The key here is to keep distance and the time between the keyframes consistent so that the camera path looks smooth. Now normally I would just lock the camera onto my character and create a path this way. It makes it a little bit easier, but unfortunately today my mouse is acting up a bit, so I have to do this manually. Alright, this looks good. I'm gonna lock everything, set my parameters to 200 frames per second and add it to my capture list. After the capturing was done, I will add both image streams to Adobe After Effects. Um, this results into two different image sequences, the original footage and the depth map stream. I will interpret the footage on 24 frames per second, and now I will mask out the top part of the original footage. And now you can see that the depth map underneath will become visible. Now I will add some specific grading presets that I have created specifically for this film on top of my original footage in order to make it match the depth map. And additionally, I add some blurring effects such as channel blur on my depth map stream in order to make it look a little bit softer. And here is the final results. Now your results may vary and that's based on two parameters. Those are MME underscore depth focus and MME underscore depth range. So I re-rendered this run another time and this time with a smaller depth focus and depth range compared to the first footage. And you can see actually the result now on the right. Uh, I prefer the right one personally as it shows you know better resemblances with the original film. Okay, so for my last example I also combined both streams. However, the depth of field maps were placed in the background this time and they become part of the color grade instead of being the primary footage. The bluish areas you see in the film are actually the depth of field maps being at work. Not only do the maps add contrast to the total grade, but they can also add some extra exposure in dark areas and which may result in more evenly lit pictures and an interesting result overall. So I will record the third example in the same map as Ignition was recorded in, uh, it's called Trespass by Pat Howard. Let's quickly add a bot on the server and start the recording. Let's just stop the recording here. This time I would create a moving camera going around the map being centered in on the action. Uh, this is a camera technique that I used in Ignition as well. To me personally, it gives off a vibe that you are part of the action, like you are an invincible player free within this two player duel to be more precise. So let's set up some capture parameters and capture the scene. Now the start of the process is more or less the same. Uh, the difference in this approach is that the depth map is added over the original footage and added in there by using a linear dodge blend mode and a blue filter. I made specific grading presets for ignition as well, which I'm now applying on the rest of the footage. Uh, I always spend a significant amount of time creating effects and grades on test footage shot in the maps that I will be using. Presets I made for ignition will basically only look good on footage that is shot in this particular map. By saving these uh, effects as presets, it allows me to save some time in post. And as you can see, when I turn the layer on and off, you can see how it contributes towards the total picture. So with that, I would like to conclude my look at Defo Field Maps within Quake 3 Machinima. Uh, I hope to have shed some insights on some of the post-production processes that I use while creating my videos. Uh, thank you so much for your attention. This is Jordi Feinsleff for a pixelated point of view. Take care.